Hey guys, welcome back. Per your request, today uh, I'll be doing an example showing you guys how to calculate the moment of inertia uh, of an object that is composed by different materials. So, here we have a section um, made by steel uh, on top and the aluminum at the bottom uh, with the given dimensions as well as the uh, modulus of elasticity of those two steel and aluminum. So, uh, we, uh, we start by having, uh, I'll show you guys the procedure first. So, the procedure for solving this kind of problem, that is to calculate the inertia for object that, you know, made by different materials, is following. First, you need to determine the modular ratio and uh, second and usually you want to pick the uh, weaker material as a base I'll explain it in detail when we go into this solving section. And the second one, second step is to transform the section, this section, by scaling the width of material by n, which is the modular ratio that we just calculated. And the last step, simple, just now just calculate the moment inertia, moment of inertia of the transformed section. So, how are we going to do that? So first of all, we're going to determine the modular ratio. And remember, the modular ratio is calculated as E divided by E base. So as I said earlier, we want to pick the weaker materials as a base. So weaker materials mean lower E. And in this case, we want to pick aluminum as our base. So our um, modular ratio of steel over aluminum is going to be 3 times 10 to the 6. Divide by 10 times 30, sorry, 30, not 3. Then divide by 10 times 10 to the 6. It's going to give you 3. So that is our modular ratio. And the next step is going to transform the section by scaling width of the material by n. And in this case, we're going to scale in the width of the steel by 3 because we're going to pick a because we already pick aluminum as our base, that means we're going to stretch the steel by increasing the width by 3. Why are we doing that? Uh, remember, in a regular problem uh, with a homogeneous stiffness, all you have to do is just to calculate the moment of inertia of different sections and then add them up together. But since we have it right here, uh, a you know different material with different stiffness. Uh, all we have to do, like imagine you have to like turn them into a, uh, you know a homogeneous piece of material. That is, they all have the same stiffness. And if you remember the formula for E, the elasticity, uh, it is equal to stretch divided by strain. And uh, in order to make the stiffness of steel equal to aluminum, uh, that is to reduce the elasticity of the steel, all you have to do, if you look at this formula, all you have to do is just to increase the strains of steel. And how are you going to increase the strain of the steel? That is, you're going to stretch it by this value. So. Uh, we're going to do our transformation as following. 
so we just gonna have this piece of aluminum the same because this is our base material but follow steel we're gonna triple the width of the steel so from four inches so let's say one of these are an inch so four inches we're gonna increase those to 12 inches so this is our new section Okay, so Z8 inch and Z12 inches. On other uh, dimensions, stay the same. So two inches high, three inches high. Yep. Right. So here's our new transform section. And once you have the transform section, all you have to do is just to calculate the inertia, the moment inertia, just like a regular piece of homogeneous stiffness. Because, you know, we already stressed the steel. They're going to have the same stiffness as the aluminum. And we can treat all of these as one pieces. So uh, I'm just going to do the calculation right now. Uh, so by procedure, First of all, we need to determine the centroid of the section, like of the whole section, and that's the y. It's going to equal to the sum of ai yi on divided by the sum of ai. And if you look at these on of this given dimension, I'm going to tell you it is three times twelve of the steel time the distance i uh, which is the distance from the centroid of that piece to the baseline so we want to pick our uh, this line at our baseline and that is the distance from here to the baseline the centroid of the steel is going to be 3 y 5 and it's going to be 1 for aluminum so you got 3.5 plus the area of the aluminum is going to be 2 times 8 times 1, the height from the baseline, uh, divided by the sum of the area, which is 3 times 12 plus 8 times 2. This is going to give you 2.73 inches. So that means our center is going to be somewhere at this point right there so this is our centroid this is our y which is the distance from the baseline okay and after that we're going to calculate the moment of inertia you know about x is x and our x is x is this one so to see x so this is Z. So on the X, we're gonna use because we're gonna separate those this section into two rectangles. We're gonna adopt the parallel ASX theorem. And here's the formula for that. You guys should be familiar with this, right? And D in this case is gonna be the distance um, from you know, centroid of that section, like of the section that we are, you know, calculating to the centroid of the whole body. So in this case, D is for uh, steel, the top one would be that small distance, and aluminum is going to be that distance right there so uh, I'll just put down that is going to be the moment of inertia of steel plus area of steel ds square one of these plus a uh, moment of inertia of aluminum yep so 
square I'm gonna put in the numbers and remember the for rectangles the moment inertia is just b h q divided by 12 h is the height and b is the width of the uh, section so it's gonna be gonna go for steel first so 12 times 3 cube divided by 12 plus area 3 times 12 times the distance d which is 3.5 minus 2.73 square and this is for um, steel and we're gonna do the same thing for aluminum aluminum is gonna be 2 8 times 2 cube divided by 12 plus 2 times 8 times 2.73 minus 1 distance that distance divided by minus that distance on square and this is going to give you 101.6 inch cube and this is your moment inertia of the transform section or the section of the original section after the transformation simple right all you have to do is if you look at the procedure right here all you have to do is to determine the modular ratio and which is, and you want to pick the wicker material as a base material so in that case n is going to be positive and you know you just need to stretch it instead of compressing it and then you're going to scale the width by n and just the rest is just the same as a regular moment in inertia problem for a um, homogeneous material section so if you have more than you know two materials let's say you got three material you got a different material on top let's say for bracks you can just gonna do the same thing you're gonna check what is the you know to figure out the elasticity of the bracks and then find the modular ratio you know by taking that divided by that of aluminum and then you're going to transform that brass as well accordingly so that at the very end you're going to have one imagine you're going to have one piece of homogeneous stiffness in that case you can just do the regular math right thank you for watching guys good luck with that